Hey everybody, good afternoon, happy weekend already. It is Friday, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> I am so glad to be back in the kitchen cooking and chatting with you guys today. I hope my lighting is really good. Today is a very, very rainy day in Hamburg. I mean, it is just terrible. The lighting is poor. I can just begin to imagine. And yeah, I hope that we're going to be able to have a lot of fun today. So guys, as you have seen on the title, oh, first of all, let me present myself. I'm Auntie Z, for those of you who do not know me. I'm the Chief Cheerleader Leader, Chef of Africa, and encouraging you and me to eat healthy the African way. To enjoy <laughs> healthy African foods, you understand, you know, for those of you who love African food, and for those of you who are also trying to lose weight, but you don't want to give up your uh, favorite African dishes. By the way, let me just go ahead and show you what I'm wearing. I know that this is not a model. <laughs> this is not a fashion show, but I just thought that this um, dress that I'm wearing today is pretty cool. So I wanted to show you guys. And I, yeah, I, I do a lot of cooking on this channel. I do a lot of witori. I do a lot of, what else do I do? I do a lot of, yeah, African nutrition thingy, you know. So you're welcome. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscription uh, or subscribe button. Join the, the super family, hit the notification bell so that you join the VVVVVIP members who are always notified first whenever I am online or whenever I post a video. So go ahead and also share this video and invite friends. Let them come and let's watch. For those of you, I don't know how many of you guys are Cameroonian, by the way, as I'm asking, oh, let me go ahead and... Hi. Hi, Eno. Let me go ahead and check if I'm online and go ahead and share it as well with my community members so that they know that I'm live. We are going to go ahead and start cooking in just a minute, but give me just a minute as well to just share this video with my fans and my followers online. Okay, there I am. I'm online. Let me know if you can, if you're watching, where you're watching from, if you can hear me loud and clear, if you can see me, tell me about the lighting today. It's a very terrible day in Germany. It's rainy, it's foggy, it's misty, so I can just imagine that the video is not going to be very clear today. But we are going to go ahead and do our best here, you know. Um, let me know who is watching, where you're watching from. Let me know where you're watching from so that I can welcome you the super way. Okay, so I've copied the link and I'm going to go ahead and share that on Facebook. Hi, hi, Honorine, watching from Canada. Oh, Honorine, yes. Oh, wow, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to share this video. Help me share the video as well to your uh, on your Facebook or social media handles so that other people can join and benefit from this cooking life and talking that we're about to do. Welcome, everybody. Are you guys Cameroonian? I think so. Eno is Cameroonian. I'm Cameroonian, by the way. I'm just trying to share the video. So, Achu and Low Carb Tarot. It's going to be a quick one today as well. I'm going to show you how I managed to eat at you and I'm still, I mean, I've not lost the weight, all of the weight yet. I have a long way to go, but I'm all for African food. I'm all, I'm an advocate for eating your normal foods. I mean, those foods that we grew up with, those are, that are healthy, that are fresh from the ground, fresh from the market. Do you understand? Oh yes. Hi, Levine. Welcome. Welcome to the live show today. Uh, I'm all for African food and, you know, nutrition. And also, I believe that you do not have to uh, restrict yourself a lot when you're trying to lose weight. You do not have to, I mean, go on a starvation diet. You do not have to um, completely forego all of the foods that you have known growing up because you are trying to lose weight. Weight loss is a process and the best way to sustainably lose weight is by eating the foods that are healthy, that are wholesome, that you have grown up with, that you know, not those foods that you go and you buy from the supermarket and you, 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 do, not even, you do not even know how to read what's on the label. Do you understand? So 
um, it is very important that when you're trying to lose weight, don't completely give up everything. Don't completely make a 360 degree turn because when you make a 360 degree turn, you come back to square knot. And that's the reason why we have a lot of yo-yo uh, 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 effect. You see, people are going to lose weight now and then after four months of losing weight under a very uh, difficult starvation kind of diet, they now regain all the weight even faster than they lost it. So I'm going to go ahead and for those of you who do not know what Achu is, uh, Achu is a very, very favorite, uh, one of our, well, main dishes in Cameroon, especially the English speaking zones of Cameroon. And it is made up of, um, you know, a lot of ethnic spices, uh, a lot of assorted meats, obstacles. <laughs> As we know them and um, red palm oil. So, without much ado, I hope that the rest of people are, are logging in before we start. And I'm just here trying to post these things. Oh my goodness. With an iPad, it's so difficult. It is so difficult. There you go. Please help me post this video so that many more people can join us. And we are just going to start in a minute. Okay, so for those of you who are on a weight loss journey, generally they're going to tell you that, okay, don't eat a chew because it has a lot of oil, you know, and all of that. Now, I've mentioned it already before on my live videos on Facebook that um, the fat or the oil is not the problem. The carbohydrate is not the problem. It's how you combine these foods and how, you, how much of these foods you eat. For those of you who are extremely overweight with a BMI of about, say, from 35 going upwards, and also you have this uh, visceral obesity, that means there's an accumulation of fat on your abdomen area, it is very important that when you're trying to lose weight, you want to make sure that you are reducing carb carbohydrate intake a great deal. So I'm here trying to watch your video. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the comments so that I don't miss out on anything. Okay, there you go. Yes, so you want to reduce carbohydrate. That's the reason why today I'm going to show you the two ways. Since my husband is not trying to lose weight, I'm going to make tarot for him, you know, and for myself, I'm going to show you the alternative. So let me go ahead and show you the ingredients that we are going to be using today. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, I guess you can see. Yes. So if you can see this, I have here on this plate um, a couple of ingredients that they use for taro, for the sauce, okay? So for the, 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 the achu soup, of course, these are not all the ingredients that are being, that we use for achu soup, but these are just a few. I did not have all the ingredients um, not ground to show you. It's really difficult to have all the ingredients this way, but I just want to show you some of the ingredients that I have in the house here. So generally, when you're trying to make a chew soup, they use, um, what is this, country onions, what we call country onions in Cameroon. I don't know, there is also an English name for this. So if you know the English name, please go ahead and uh, write it as a comment here so that other people can learn. So you have the country onions, we have what we call the pepper or the African nutmeg. The Nigerians call this one a huru, I think, a huru. You have the negro pepper, this one's here. This is negro pepper. They use it, and these quantities that you are seeing are not the 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 what you are going to what we are going to grind for one pot of soup. I'm just showing you the ingredients. This is not these are not the quantities. Here I have what we call in Cameroon cartre cote that has already been peeled and you know broken a little bit. Generally, it's long and brown like that. You guys know it. And then I don't even forget the name of this one. This one looks like black pepper, but it is not black pepper. This one is generally good when you are doing like um, snail pepper soup, nyamangoro pepper soup. I mean these small corns here. I've forgotten the name. I'm so sorry. So they use it for nyamangoro pepper soup or a goosey soup with uh, ogono, you know. I don't know. Anybody knows this? Maybe I should bring it a little bit so you can see. I'm talking about this small spice here that looks like black pepper, but it's not. So generally, um, my grandmother used to use it a lot, especially for um, nyamangoro pepper soup or ogono soup with egusi, you know, that kind of thing like that. 
And then we also have this, this um, the back of a tree here. I don't know what it is called, whether they call an await you. Now, God, you want Sabi. I mean, somebody should really go ahead and do some research and give us English names for all of these spices because somebody like me trying to write a book on Cameroonian spices is going to be difficult for the international population to know what these things are called. If you don't know the name, you know, or at least the scientific name. So this one too is used. And then you have this one that is just like flat. I also don't know the name. I, I tried to reach my mom to, for her to tell me the names of these things. I couldn't get her. So unfortunately, I'll have to do the research and bring the name they get the names for you guys and then maybe post it as a comment under this video so these are some of the spices these are just some of the spices that you need for achu and most of these spices what they, what happens is that they are uh they are grilled something like that on charcoal or so not too much and then they are ground into something like this so this is the achu spice that i'm going to be using for our achu soup today. Yeah, I have two tablespoons. I'm not sure I'm going to be using all. Of course, you have. Now, what do they call this one? Limestone. For pigeon, how do they call this one? Ah, uh -uh, nobody is commenting. You, these Cameroonian women. Yes. So this is limestone we are going to be using definitely. Oh, and then I have my red palm oil here. Maybe I should just go ahead and bring this camera a little bit ahead of us so that we can all see what is happening okay then of course i have red palm oil right here okay for the achu cocoa i'm using the flour version okay this is dried akangwa thank you eno akangwa so this is dried achu cocoa and i'm going to open it and we're going to see how it looks like here in Germany, it's sometimes very difficult to get fresh achu cocoa. So I got the, the dried one. And so I cook it and it's not that bad. It's okay. So you just want to make sure that it is 100% achu cocoa. They have not mixed some flour in it and stuff like that. Okay. So we get this one from the African shop and we are going to see what it looks like. I'm cooking this one for my husband. Now, the reason why I'm not going to be eating this myself is because this Achu cocoa generally has a lot of carbohydrate. Well, not that much, but at least it's a reasonable quantity. So um, I'm going to talk about the carbohydrate content in this achu cocoa in a bit. Then I have my assorted meats here that I have already cooked. I think you people can see. Um, I have towel, what we call towel in Cameroon, which is also called shaki in Nigeria. I have gizzard. Yesterday I posted about gizzard. You know, they say in Cameroon, they say women are not supposed to eat gizzard. I cannot understand why they deprive us from gizzard for so long in that country. But <laughs> that's what it is. Okay, so, and then I also have beef. Okay, there's beef here. The only thing I don't have here is kanda. Unfortunately, I couldn't find good kanda. I only found the bleach kanda. And that's a really serious problem in Germany and in other some other European countries. To get really good quality, the kanda or pomo that we know in Africa is really rare to find. The one that I, I, I had from Cameroon is already finished. Just as a bonus, guys, I have here um, vegetables that I've sautéed, okay? This is spinach. You guys know that, well, for us, when my mother was cooking at you, she would always have some sautéed vegetables on the side so that we can have some vegetables coming in. And that's the reason why I really, really love African food like that because they always do everything they can to really try as much as possible to have all the different food groups going on do you understand so that you have the nutrients so um while i'm preparing my stove here i want to talk about the carbohydrate content of taro and the carbohydrate content of what we are going to be using to make my own version of the taro so to make my own low carb version of taro <laughs> <laughs> so to make my own version of tarot, I'm using eggplant, what you call in French aubergine. I don't know if you guys know this eggplant. Generally in Cameroon it's found, even I think even in Nigeria. Um, generally we know the garden egg, the smaller ones, okay? But this is what I'm going to be using for my own fufu and I'm going to show you how to make it. The difference between 
taro cocoa yam and this lies in the calorie content and the carbohydrate content so here taro 100 grams of taro which is about let me show you what 100 grams of taro looks like eh? so that you know what we are talking about just give me one second uh -huh. oh i don't show you money for gram <laughs> 100 grams of taro looks just like something like this this is actually a potato but you'll be surprised that this is about 100 grams. So the problem is that how many, hey, Karin, hi. The thing is that most of us, if you cook 100 grams of taro that looks like this, this one of you belly foot you. You yourself, you know, if you are, if you are, <laughs> if you are honest with yourself, you know that this kind of food cannot belly foot you. Talk less of if you want to eat a reasonable plate of a chew, you know that 100 grams of taro cannot be enough. If you are, your weight is okay, you don't have a problem, you're not pre-diabetic, you know, you're not struggling with your weight, you can even eat 400 grams, that's your unquaza. Do you understand? Now your problem with that. But if you're like me, struggling to lose weight, in the battle, battling against fat, crying fat must die anyhow. This one, you know that you eat one cocoa like this, it cannot benefit you. It cannot belly food you. So we want to make sure that we are eating and getting full. You understand? Because food is not only, you know, food is enjoyment. That's why God created food. You have to enjoy what you are eating. And then you need a certain quantity to be full. So, say for example, you were to eat 100 grams of taro. 100 grams of taro contains uh, 35 grams of carbohydrate. 35 grams of carbohydrate for 100 grams. This is just this small one. This one is never pound and self. By the time you don't pound them, you will see and say the quantity be so small. So if you want, if you are going to be the person that's going to eat about 400 grams of a two cocoa that has been pounded, I'm going to show you what it looks like approximately when we are finished cooking. You are going to realize that you have to multiply that 35 by four. You are only talking about 100 and and 30 grams of carbohydrate just in one meal. You have not even counted the, the soup. You have not counted the small carbohydrate that is going to come from the meat and all of that. So it becomes way too much. So if you have to eat three meals um, that have 130, 140 grams of carbohydrates a day, it's going to be very difficult to lose weight. Why? Because the carbohydrate that you eat and you ingest is always conve converted into sugar in the blood. And the problem is that when sugar is in the blood, what happens is that the hormone insulin is going to be released to be able to convert that sugar into either energy for usage or into fat for storage. So when you are already fat, you want your body to be, or your, your yeah, you want your body to be burning the fat, excess fat that you already have. So you cannot be increasing, adding, adding, adding more. Do you understand? That is the reason why whenever you are eating a high fat food like a chew soup, you want to make sure that your your carbohydrate on the side is a low carb side. So aubergine that we are going to be using to make our aubergine fufu today, 100 grams of aubergine has just six grams of carbohydrate. It's a big difference. You are talking about 30 grams of carbohydrate that is less. So it actually means that you can actually eat these two, which are about 400 grams, for about six times four, 24 grams of carbohydrate. That's a good alternative. And then you will feel full. Okay, now the people are going to say, okay, um, aubergine does not taste like taro. It's not the same thing. Listen, wait and cook it and eat first before you will know. Anything that for more be the taster. Okay, people? So that's just the short difference. And also one thing that is good about aubergine is that it has a lot of fiber, especially if you are cooking it with the skin on or with the peel on. It has a lot of fiber. We know that fiber is fiber is good for digestion. Do you understand? Fiber is good for bowel movement. Do you understand? It's very good. All right. Let us go ahead and start cooking. The first thing that we are going to do, guys, is that we are going to start steaming our, our, our aubergine. First of all, we are going to go ahead and wash it. Yeah? We're going to go ahead and wash this. If you have any questions so far, let me know. Oh, this is my spoon thing says, you know, Oliver, make man see something. Uh, my spoon wrap. Yeah, so you want to wash this, make sure you wash it. A very good thing to do, especially if you're using non-organic fruits and vegetables, is as I always told you to steep it in 
um, baking powder water so that all of those chemicals uh, should be killed. So we are going to go ahead and wash this properly. Under running water, of course. Okay, so now that we have washed this, the next step is we are going to, let me put this down. We are going to go ahead and just cut it. Meanwhile, I'm going to turn on my oven. Uh, sorry. My, hey, see me, I want to throw this big part of aubergine. And I'm not going to peel the skin because, guys, of course, it's not going to really look pretty at the end. But what I want is the nutrition that this thing can give me. So, um, who cares about pretty when there is nutrients, okay? Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So, we're just going to go ahead and cut these aubergines um, into smaller pieces just like so. Let me, guys, let me know how was your week. You understand? How do you cook your achu? Who are those struggling in the weight loss journey business like myself? Struggling to lose weight. Anybody doing, trying to lose weight? Anybody in the journey fighting fat? I wanted us to chit chat today, guys. And what I wanted us to talk about is has to do with support from um africans cameroonians in general in, in particular so this is the third one i'm going to use some of this aubergine also in my um in my in my achu soup just to give it some volume you know and to add some vegetables inside there guys you mustn't do it like this everybody is different you can do it how the way you please you know it's all up to you so that is the reason why you are going to see me slice some of the aubergine differently like this just like so because i'm going to use it for the actual soup on facebook this week guys i was just scrolling and i saw people sharing um one lady's video so apparently this lady is um a, an american citizen she's white and it seems as though she's married to um a cameroonian i don't know if you guys have seen that video it seems as though she's married to a Cameroonian. Do you know her? I've forgotten her name. So, many Cameroonians, especially, and also Africans have been sharing her videos, which I think are very good. She cooks a lot of African food, you know, a lot of, sorry, Cameroonian food. Um, the video that I saw last week was uh, a video that she cooked, Sese Coco, you know. So, they were so excited about that video. People were sharing it helter skelter and stuff like that. Okay, so here we have our aubergine that have, has been sliced. We're just going to go ahead and turn this around and you can see my pots right there. I'm going to put this, this is a, a steamer. So I have some water in that steamer already and I'm going to add my aubergine on top here. The reason why I'm putting it in a steamer is because you know aubergine, these vegetables are mostly, uh, have a lot of water content. So to be able to make the aubergine fufu that we want to do, aubergine taro, we want to make sure that the, we, we don't have a lot of water inside there, even though it becomes a little bit difficult. So that's the reason why I'm steaming it instead. But if you don't have a steamer like this, you can always boil it and then drain off the water later. So we're going to go ahead and cover this pot up, just like so. And then the next step, what we are going to do next, guys, we're going to also start preparing our tarot the real tarot itself oh this pot is wet one minute i'm coming guys so just so that we have we go faster while we cook so we're going to add in some water here yes yes levine vlogs you are right mm -hmm. she's a white lady oh this might think don't panche house so now not easy oh. okay so i guess all of you people can see properly uh -huh. let me bring my ipad here so that i can be following up the conversation you people are writing there uh -huh. so she she that lady prepared um she said coco and you know people were so amazed at the fact that she is cooking cameroonian food which i find amazing because and of course when you marry a, a, a cameroonian man it is also a good idea to 
learn to cook his own food now it's an intercultural thing so it is a it's also a very good idea so these things are cooking let's talk a little bit this is a chit chat video it's also a good idea to learn to cook what he he loves do you understand and i get it i get it but what i don't get is the fact that we africans are super excited about the fact that or Cameroonians are super excited about the fact that a white woman is cooking sesekoko and then they are sharing all over the place your own friends on facebook that, that see you they know that you are a food blogger that see let me talk about myself my own friends on facebook who know that i'm a food blogger when they know say auntie zidi cook for youtube since one year two years now and i always share my my this thing my 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 uh, videos on facebook the way they share this woman's post they don't share my own like that you people know that auntie z is very direct i'm i must talk and hold her so saw comes as saw do you understand so that's what got me thinking <laughs> and i was like so what makes this lady special do you understand why he be saying we african then we Cameroonian then we like for leak white money you understand i don't want to use the word ma well let me just use it leak white money show why he did say white man is always a superior human being with as compared to us by the way this is the tarot here that i've opened this is a half one i'm going to pour it out so that you can see how it looks like why is it that when you an african who is cooking the same food you don't get the shares and the enthusiasm and the excitement that you the the, the white lady has what is spark sam let me tell you about something if there is any excitement you want to give for cooking especially those of you on a, on a day or you go land do you know how many types of food and can cook so what makes me if the one looking at a special person way okay say the person the cook or you uh, uh, white man chop i can also cook a lasagna that's italian food i can cook a, 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 a mexican food yes can you put also bake pizza so what is so exciting why is it that our own people will not support their own but when a white person does eat you understand everybody is like oh my god see a white woman see white woman no see white babe see babe oh he cook a nantari he cook at you he cook this one what is special about it did she not also learn she learned she learned she learned and she's cooking something okay you know what they need to announce me on uh, national television in germany here because i speak german very well yes i don't only speak german i speak french very well they should also announce me on german national television in this country whether you speak german or you don't speak german nobody has your time you are not special you are not special do you understand what i'm saying i have realized that we africans now we self think one hand so we bring ourselves down me i don't i don't i don't look at, i don't know and i be that now we say self we take our own hand we bring ourselves down we don't want our our we don't want any african to to succeed well most of us don't want to see another person succeed because if it were the case though the same people who are sharing a white woman a, a evil woman's cooking video you understand who, who but they cannot share your own you cameroonians own they say ah by the way this is wasabi cook turning cocoa if auntie z is cooking turning cocoa what is special about her but there's something special about a white woman cooking at cocoa why it is the same thing i was in cameroon last year or oh, what was it i think in 2000 and 2013 i just i went out to the ministry just to go and do a certain, some certain number of things at that time they had put a dress code they said ladies had to wear skirts reaching right to their knees do you understand you don't got rich ministry now you don't wear your own correct clothes some other girls came who were not really they did not really obey the dress code what happened they drove these african Indian girls away that they should go and dress properly many many two many never pass or you know why my woman can with short nika they let her pass and enter the ministry do you see do you see how we think you see that ooh, 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 ooh. what am i doing so this is how this fufu looks like ooh. this one is a chemical experiment right now oh ha. because Antizi wants to make noise talk 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 here so i'm going to go ahead and put this thing down to show you 
what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. So it's kind of white actually, but when we are going to start cooking it, it's going to change color. So it's actually just taro that has been dried and you know ground. And I think it's a good idea, especially for working moms who do not really have time to pound at you. <laughs> for pound at you not be play matter. I remember in those days when we used to pound at you for 22 people. By the time you don't finish pound at you, I like your back don't broke, your banja don't broke. Hello everybody, Audrey. I like your banja don't broke or oh, <laughs> you don't develop muscle for your hand. It's not easy. So it is a good idea to also have something like this. So you see, they will allow a white lady inside who is not um, wearing a skirt as well. But their own fellow sister who is wearing a skirt that's not up to the knee, they will say, no, you cannot enter. We Africans, we need to do better. We need to do better, to be quite honest with you. Hello, hello Lillian's English Place. Hello everybody, welcome. We are making a chew today for those of you just joining in. We are making a chew. I have shown you all the ingredients, um, the, the on ground ingredients here. Um, if you just scroll or rewind this thing, if you can rewind it, you're going to see some of the ingredients that you need to make a chew. Of course, I don't have all of it, and I've shown you the ground spices as well. There are certain meat that we need. We need palm oil for the a Do you understand? And what else? I showed you sauteed spinach that we have also made. <laughs> Oh yes, to cook at you, well, mm, what should I say? It seems as though it's not that easy, but it's actually, it's actually easy, especially if you already have the spices that have been put together for you. So, uh, it's actually, it's, well, to me, to me, it's easy. I think it's a practice that makes perfect. So, what we have been doing, for those of you joining in right now, I'm going to go ahead and show you. We have here our aubergine, Now this is the low cap version that we are doing aubergine that we are going to be using to make fufu for our achu soup i mentioned before the reason why i am doing aubergine and why here in this other pot i have water that is cooking to make taro for my for my husband so i said that if you are on a weight loss journey like myself and you, you i mean you are overweight you have a bmi of 35 and plus it is very good to always watch your carbohydrate intake, especially in combination with high fat food. So if you are extremely ob ob obese and you have fat on your belly, abdomen area, it's a very good idea to, you know, you can eat high fat, of course, the, 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 the heart healthy high fats, but you need to know how you combine it if, if you are going to eat carbohydrates with those high fat foods. So Achu is one of those foods which is made with um, a, relative, a relatively good amount of, of red palm oil. Do you understand? And that, the, that's the reason why when you are combining or you are eating at you, you want to make sure that your, your carbohydrate or the, the side which you are eating, it, you are not going to now indulge in 400 grams of taro or a fat plate of taro. We looked at it here. Hi, Christy. Welcome. <laughs> we, look, we, we have talked about the, the carbohydrate content in 100 grams of taro, which is 35, actually 34.6 grams of carbohydrate per 100 grams of, of taro. And I showed you that 100 grams of taro can be just like this small size of potato that I'm holding in my hand. So you see, you can know that this is 100 grams because it just feels the size of your palm. Do you understand? Of your hands, you can hold it like this. This is 100 grams. And to be quite fair, and is it, I cannot eat this kind of small quantity and be, I don't feel better full. There's no way I can be, I can belly full on this kind of small thing. Let us not lie to ourselves. Do you understand? And I, I mentioned, say, make me not do starvation diet. Don't be doing punishment diet. If you're on a weight loss journey, know that this is something for the long run, which is, which is going to only be sustainable if you eat right, if you eat something that you like. You know, there's no reason why you are going to be eating one leaf of carrot, one leaf of, of salad, and one carrot every day when you don't like it. You have to enjoy what you are eating. It is part of the weight loss uh, 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 journey that's going to help you to lose weight sustainably. Some people are going to say, oh, Auntie Z, you have been doing weight loss, but you are not losing weight, you know, because, you know, we Africans, we like to we like a quick fix. We want to see overnight results. Now, 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 now. Do you understand? It took Auntie Z eight years to become how many kilos? It will not take me one, one month to reduce 40 kilos at a time. It cannot happen like that. And then again, we want to be eating, when you 
go and get, get to one the nutritionist who is going to tell you that, oh, no, you, have, you can lose 10 kilos in one month. Eh? The only thing is that don't eat again. Don't eat at all. Don't eat. Don't eat at you. Don't eat plantain. Don't eat cocoa yams. Don't eat. Don't eat. Don't eat. Don't eat. Don't eat. Don't eat. Don't. What are you supposed to eat? You want to go and be eating things that you cannot even read what they are written on the label. Do you understand? So, we are almost getting uh, done with our aubergine right here. While that's cooking, my water is boiling, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. Let us start with the with this cooking process right here. I hope you can see this. Bring it a little bit further. Yes. Okay. So, that is my water boiling for my taro. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the heat and open up the other packet as well. So that I have enough of the taro. Uh -huh. So let us continue this chatting thing. One other thing I've re re realized here in Germany is that if you want to get the best of service, what's that? Season's day. If you want to get the best of service in this land, whatever it may be, whether you're going to a shop to buy, I don't know, electronics or to buy makeup, let me tell you, if you are looking for your brother to give you good service, that is your, your black brother. Because of that, you think that you're going to have good service from him. You are wasting your time. The experience that we have made here is that our black brothers are the worst Custom, give the worst customer service. The worst. I don't know. This is our taro. I mentioned to you guys that we are using dried taro. For those of you who have not seen the box, let me go ahead and show you before we start this cooking. So this is it. And I just mentioned that it is really difficult to have fresh um, atu cocoa in this in this part of the world. So we have we are blessed that some people are producing dried taro from the box, which is also a great thing. For busy moms like myself. Okay, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to first of all reduce some of the water. Because remember, I'm cooking. This taro is actually only, let me say, yeah, my children are going to taste, but yeah, they will not be able to eat that much. So I'm going to re reduce the water and I've reduced the heat. Now, next. I'm going to go ahead and grab my taro, like this. I reduce the heat to zero, and it has to be a really, really, really fast process. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm bringing this thing a little bit further so that we can see. Fast process, as you are putting, as you are stirring. You see the color is changing. Oh, it gets a little bit messy, but it's all right. See what I'm talking about? Now, when you pour in the taro there, please don't over pour it. Let it not be too much taro at a go because you don't want to cook strong taro. So, you have to be quite fast because this thing cooks quick. See, the color has changed right now. This will tell you that the type of taro that they used was the pinky one, whitey pinky taro. And it's really kind of stretchy. Um, at the beginning because um, well it has that kum kum texture you know the dried one now for the way mango for no whether na mozzarella mango and for na butter mango and for for a muscle them or na muscle mango on the trainer che no be plating <laughs> so we we'll continue with it yes yes cela will attend them my friend only the small quantities, they so. So you want to make sure that you just go ahead and uh, pound, in inverted commas, open and close, it on the side, such that you don't have any koro koro, as what we're talking You now understand? Practically, that's it. That's just it. So, remember that I've uh, reduced the heat completely. Everything is good. I'm going to add a little bit of water under there from the hot water that I removed. Just a little bit, a wee bit, just like so. You know, the thing is already, I mean, you don't need a lot of water for this. So I'm just going to scrape these things under here and then cover my pot. Actually, the thing does rise. I don't know if you noticed the quantity that I used for my husband's own 
it's not you know you use a little quantity of, of flour but then the thing like doubles when you add it to the water of course because of the water all right let's go ahead and check our aubergine Woo. let me remove my ipad from here before heat can go spoil okay so we are going to check the aubergine to see if it's soft enough and ready for for processing so well it looks quite soft but i think i'm going to give it one more minute while we just finish up the the taro cooking the taro here any questions so far people is ibo coco yeah, no no this is ibo coco and of course i mean Lydia, you can always use anything for anything you know it's always you have to always keep trying um you have to always keep trying because someone like me it's in the course of always trying this one or that one that I develop um, new recipes. So of course, yes, you can use Ibo Coco to make Ekwan or Kwa Coco. It's the same taste, different, no day. The thing where they make any one bean and the ingredients where you use and take cooker. Yes, so for me, <coughs> you can actually use it to cook whatever thing you want to cook. Let me touch this thing again. So I have the aubergine here. I'm going to leave it for a while, just maybe two minutes. Let it really get soft because we want to have the effect of um. What did you What did you mix up the garden eggs with? I did not add anything to the garden eggs. Nothing at all. It's just simply garden eggs that are being steamed at the moment. All right, let us go ahead and take a look at our our ibo coco. Let's take a look at our cocoa yams cooking here. See that it's cooking, heat is on the low end, and we're just going to go ahead and give it a mix. Pour down bonbon, mix it be first for go carry cloth bringer. Uh -huh. Yeah. So once again, as you are cooking it, even the color, this pinky color has to change some more to turning towards, um, let me not say brown, but cream, yeah, cream white. Uh -huh. So, it's looking good. Just pretty tricky to pound, so to say. I could actually pound it. Hold on. Hold on, guys. I'm coming. Let me bring my pound. Let's see. but i don't know that's not really necessary so i have a pounding stick here this one is from cameroon as well so if you are finding it difficult or having trouble using a wooden spoon like the one that i used to i broke it on my son's head you can use a pounding stick just to make things a little bit easier for you But the end result is always going to be good. So don't panic as you are seeing it the way it is right now. Now small. I know somebody who is going to enjoy um, his acute this afternoon. See, when you use a pounding stick, it becomes easier to manage. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. And it really cooks quickly. So, it tastes like cocoa yam because it's cocoa yam, of course. Okay, let me just finish up with the, the stick. Sorry, we are with my, my this thing stick. So that we can start with the soup. I told you guys that we are going to be really fast today. Do this on the side. Give it a texture. If you feel that it is too hard for you because everybody's taste is different, you can go ahead and add some more water, let it cook. You understand? See how it is becoming. You see? This how it's that's 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 just it. Woo! Mm-hmm. Man, I don't take goo for the atu cocoa because you know it's mm, the way I'm enjoying it. I will last forget aubergine did the way the cooker. <laughs> yes, okay, so let's go ahead and Finish up this and then start with the with the aubergine. Mm. 
There you go, and I'm done. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to remove this. I'll have to wash my hands first. And, uh, so many things on this slab. I'm going to use this because I don't have the one with Cameroonian on. Ha! Manga for improvise. Okay. Okay, so we're just going to grab all of this. Just like so. Look at that. Oh, yum. And inside the bowl it goes. There you go. As easy as that. Ha! Love it. So this is what you do. I'm just going to go ahead and scoop the rest. And I'm going to use my hands to smoothen it out, okay? Meanwhile, let me just add some water here. Or oh, let me just remove this one. Hmm. Just smoothing it out a little bit like that. You want to make sure that you make it presentable now. My mom will say, I beg, please. Things that chop fine. You did get chop for Ure, you did get chop for dog, you did get chop now for pussy. Things that chop. She will say, serve the food just the way you would want somebody to serve you. So, I'm going to go ahead and, and fix it. Well, like so. Uh-huh. And then what else you want to do if you are not eating it immediately? You might want to cover it with aluminum foil if you like putting holes on the aluminum foil. But I just like to put this paper on top like that because it, it can breathe through, okay? If you cover it with aluminum foil completely without holes, it's going to become too soft because the heat is going to generate more heat inside the middle and it's going to cook and soften the whole thing even more. All right, that's done. Let me put this aside. And now, here we go. We have this one going on. Ooh, that vapor. That vapor. My, my, my. All right, it's time for us to make this aubergine thing happen. And the first thing that we're going to do, let me go ahead and put this next pot this way. Okay, so... Okay, guys, coming, coming, coming. You can see that our aubergine is really soft. I don't want to touch it with my hands because I don't want me to burn me where way. So I'll just you look at that. Soft, 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 extra soft. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it out from here and I'm going to remove the quantity that I'm going to use for my achu soup because i remember i told you guys that i'm going to be using some of it for my achu soup because i want to thicken the soup a little bit as well so the ones that i had cooked and um, sliced into smaller smaller slices that's what i'm taking out right now for my achu soup let me know guys what else do you put in your achu soup do you add aubergine or garden egg I grew up seeing my mother at garden, or my grandma, actually. My grandma used to sell achu in Bamenda, in Old Town. So she used to add um, even mushrooms. Let me see. Okay, Lilian says, does it taste anything as close as fresh cocoa? Well, if I said yes, that's going to be a lie. But then again, aubergine doesn't have a strong taste that is repulsive. Do you understand? What makes a chew is the sauce. If you season the sauce well, do you understand? If you season the sauce well, let me put this thing so you can see me. If you season the sauce well, then you are not even going to notice that you are actually eating aubergine. It's the same, even with achu cocoa. Most of the time, even personally, I am not a big fan of achu cocoa. I'm, I'm actually really not a big fan of achu cocoa. So I'll, I'll drink the soup a lot and I'll take just a little bit of achu cocoa for 
myself. So when you are eating your achu, you're going to notice that the achu cocoa even does not, I mean the, the achu soup, the, the taste of the achu soup is, is, is more pronounced. Hello, Helen. Welcome. We are in the process of making some low carb aubergine for our achu soup here. Uh -huh. That's what I'm talking about. So I have already steamed my, my aubergine. This is it. I'm, I put it in this bowl just like so that it becomes a little bit, um, what's the word? Cold, a little bit colder, not so hot. Okay. So I'm just trying to create space and I'm going to show you guys what I'm about to do next. Bear with me. The sink is full and they cooking. So it's a normal thing. All right. Uh, make some space here. And we are going to drain enough water from our aubergine because it's important. If you don't drain the water, what's going to happen is that you are going to have a cocoa that is too soft. We don't want that. So this is the aubergine that's been cooked or steamed. What I have here is a cloth. I have a white piece of cloth. If you have something like that, it's good. If you don't, you can use a strainer, okay? But it's not as effective. So I'm going to go ahead and have this, put my white cloth here. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Tell me, oh, if you cannot see. Uh -huh. So I'm going to now put in the aubergine here, inside there. And I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the water out because we want to have a texture that is similar to, see? Woo, it's hot. <laughs> it's just that we are doing a live show. Like generally what I would have done is I would have let it cool for a bit. Oh my goodness. Hot oh man. When I want to reduce my bright price by burning my fingers in this kitchen or how? Ah. So what I'm, I'm trying to just press out the water. And I'm going to show you the quantity of water that can come out from this. So we're going to just press, press, press. Let the water be extracted. Oh, come on. Press, press. Some people, what they do is they, they blend it first and then they press later. Well, it's up to you. For me, I find that if you blend it first before extracting the water, extracting the water becomes difficult. Oh, now it's gonna go hot with this thing hot soap. Ayo, bande. So I'm going to go ahead and press. Wah, wey kolo. Wey kolo. Mama, slafes is a shop there. Man, I bet you want to share some tips. Hey, let me look at, maybe you are commenting, I cannot even see. Yeah, so I don't I cannot play with my bright bright price. Wonderful. What are you people talking about? Eh? You want to burn my fingers before time? Wait, ewo, ewo, ewo. Another option with this low carb thing is you can use half aubergine and half fufu. Okay, so what that means is that you can boil water, you know, start cooking to a quantity of fufu like 100 grams, and then when it's almost half cooked, you now add your aubergine that has been blended. Okay, I want to go ahead and show you guys how much woo, water has come out from this. See, look at that. So if you were to cook this aubergine without blending it, you will have a problem. It's going to be too soft. Do you understand? And it doesn't really make any sense at all. So let me go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Now, the blending part or the processing part, I like to use my food processor right here. Anybody has a food processor like this? So, ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the water is all out now. So, I've already burned my fingers enough before even thinking about that one. So, oh, so now to blend, I use my food processor. I don't use a normal blending machine because it's difficult to blend. You will need to add water and that doesn't make any sense to remove water and then add water again. So I just put it in my food processor like this. 
Yeah, then I cover it up. Oh, oh. Okay, there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and process this thing. Army seal stands. Where is your faithfulness? If you don't have a blender or a food processor, you can use a, a, a pounding, a mortar and a pistol, pound the whole damn thing. There you go. And can you guys see what I'm doing? Oh, I need to put this thing up. Ah, there you go. So you can see. So this is my food processor. And it's going to get loud in a bit. How it's doing? I'm going to try to and come close to show you. Looks like this. I'm going to press it all in so that everything gets processed. Now that we have some larger pieces and then some softer pieces. So again, we're going to process this one more time. And again, it's going to get loud. has become very very hello Solange there you go look at that so one more time I'm going to go ahead and blend it it's really really soft right now oh Cheryl I can't take your call at the moment so there you go there you go we're going to go ahead and blend this one last time and then we're going to be ready ready Aubergine should look like so it is really really very well blended like this pretty pretty soft So I'm just going to go ahead and pour it inside my pot here So remember that it's already cooked so we are not trying to cook it all over again What we are going to do is just we want to add an ingredient that holds it or binds it together yeah so let's go to the stove top and finish this up obstacles all right so I have my aubergine right here aubergine fufu right here there you go so I'm going to put a little bit of fire um, heat under that pot and then the next thing we're going to add is this. Let me go ahead and I did not even find, look for it to wait. We're going to add, hey, where is it? 
Imagine say I don't see you at the final now. I'll just laugh until. You. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Let me reduce the heat on that first. It will. Okay, I'm looking for my senior horse right now. And I cannot. Yeah, there you go. Hey, my heart one cut. Wonderful is John. All right, so what I have here is psyllium husk. This is what we are going to use to bind our aubergine fufu. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to add one tablespoon of psyllium husk. This is psyllium husk. And it's a high fi fiber, what should I say? High fiber something that binds, that helps to bind. This is what people use to make cabbage, fufu, you understand? So you can add, they say the, the quantity to eat every day is two tablespoons maximum. So there you go. I've added one tablespoon to that and I'm going to add another small half so that it binds properly. So that we, we have something that has the, con, um, the texture of taro. Now let's add the heat. And it's just going to come together effortlessly. And I'm going to show you. Now it still looks as though it is, you know, it is like, what should I say? It's not binding. But once the heat comes on, it's going to go very fast. Meanwhile, in this pot to hasten things up, I'm going to add some water. Let's add some water. Oh. Man, the pot was already on high heat like that, you know me. You are going to see some seeds inside there, but these are just the seeds of the aubergine. So it's all right. And it looks pretty dark. It looks, some people are going to say it looks disgusting, you know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, what we are trying to do is lower carbohydrate intake and still enjoy delicious african food uh -huh. so the thing i started binding now i can see it and inside my water on this other area in the pot behind there i'm going to add kangwa or limestone to start the preparation of our achu soup just like that that small quantity looks small but i like to test as i go do you understand yeah, the aubergine I'm using is the eggplant, what they call eggplant in English. It's not garden egg, so don't be surprised. There you go, so the thing is binding. Oh my God, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. It smells neutral, neut neutral. it tastes neutral. So what the most important thing is going to be our achu soup. Do you understand? That is what we are looking at. And that's the most important thing. So once your achu soup is in place, it's tasting well you are good to go no stress at all and you are going to be consuming for example about 200 grams of aubergine fufu see the thing is already binding do you see that it's binding it's actually like gary right now so if you want to have the white color you can use cabbage instead you can use cabbage so we are not going to cook this for long because the aubergine had been steamed prior to this process. Okay. Mmm, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So, let's go. I'm going to go ahead and now prepare my plate where this thing is going to put in. Well, we are going to have the aubergine fufu and everything so i'm going to also show you what quantity of aubergine fufu we are eating so that you know exactly how many calories especially and how or as more especially or more importantly sorry how many um 
Carbohydrates. How many grams of carbohydrates are you consuming? So this thing is cooked. It's already ready. It has bound, it's binding well. And so I'm going to take it over to the plate. Let me take you over to the plate already. Okay, so. This is what I want to show you. I'm doing all of this because I want you to see exactly how much you are eating. So I have a scale here, if you can see, which is at zero. I'm going to go ahead and put my plate on it. And I'm going to we put it at zero again so that we know exactly what quality we are eating. All right, so now bring our whoa, delicious. So, this is our aubergine, I'm putting it on top there. So, we are talking about 240 grams of, of aubergine fufu right here. 240 grams. I want to show you this quantity because I want you to know that when you are eating aubergine fufu, 238, let me see. Now this is 240. Yeah. When you are eating aubergine fufu, you can actually eat double this quantity. Do you understand? Without any guilt that, oh, you are going overboard on your carbohydrates intake and so on and so forth. That is the advantage of it doing aubergine fufu with achu instead of taro. So let me just go ahead and set it like we normally do our taro. So this is 240 grams, like I said, and I'm going to go ahead and set it just like this with water and a spoon. I hope I still have the skills to make it around this thing. One of my biggest nightmares to do was this thing, master. I know, I know, if it was only me, I just say Monday for camera now, so. Like right now, I would have just put this thing on the side. And, you know, instead of doing all of this helter skelter palaver. Going to go ahead and make it as if it's taro. Make that hole, open it up like so, so that we have some space there. And our taro soup, guys, you know it doesn't take long. Now, small, easy tea. Now, 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 we don't make soup. You know. <laughs> so, I wanted to make this hole just to prepare everything so that when we are ready, we just go ahead and start eating. Can you see, guys? Yes. Any questions so far? Okay. So this one is going to remain here. Let's go ahead and make that soup and get eating. All right. So here, let me see. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> Those of you who are just joining in, we are doing a chew and now I'm about to make the sauce. Very, very important. Very, very quick and easy. So let's go ahead and start the process. Inside here, I have some water that I added into that pot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more, just like so. I added some kangwa, which I think I'm going to add some more. You have to get your spoon ready. I'm going to add some more kangwa because it is the kangwa that is going to help the oil to, you know, let me say dissolve and form that yellow soup that you know. So without kangwa, you cannot, you cannot make taro is very important kanwa is very very important for the taro soup so while i'm getting hot i'm coming guys please bear with me this is a live video so <laughs> it's, it has no edits so i think i'm going to add all of that because i added water so go ahead and melt that kanwa down like this yeah okay I wanted to ask you guys, do you add oil to water or water to oil? How do you cook your taro? Because everybody has a different way of cooking this thing. I know that for sure. So I, what I do is I always um, add my water into the pot, heat it up, put the kangwa. Do you understand? Put the kangwa, then I add the oil into the water drop by drop. That's what I do. I don't know how you do yours, but I find that 
that is an easy way to do it. How do you cook your own? Ooh. Mama, oh, this kawa is strong. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and put this one and then remove it later. Don't get so shocked or surprised. Oh. I'll remove it. I just needed to add some more, but this one is too strong. So I cannot break it. That's the reason. Guys, let me know what, how do you cook your own achu soup? Water to oil or oil to water? And what, how do you prefer your kangwa? Do you like a lot of kangwa in the achu soup or you don't like the, the when, when kangwa is overpowering? Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. This is the, I'm going to remove this one and put it aside and then we can start adding in the oil. To add in the oil, I like to use a whip. Let me get my whip. I'm coming. Why didn't I take that before? Yeah. No. Okay, so we are going to start adding in the oil right now. So you want to make sure that you are adding in the oil drop by drop. You see? So when this is a tester. To know if I have enough kangwa in my water or not, when you start seeing the bubbles immediately, even when you put just a drop of, of oil. Yeah, okay, so you know how much kangwa is enough. Like, I've just done a test now. I've put one drop of oil inside that water. If the kangwa was um, small, you will not have these bubbles immediately. You see? You will not have these bubbles with just a drop. I just put it. That means it was even less than a drop. But if the camera is enough, you are going to see that the bubbles are going to appear immediately. So I'm going to go ahead and continue adding in. You know, so if your camera is not enough, you realize that it's not enough, don't continue adding oil. Go ahead and add in some more camera, just like so. Why I'm adding it is because I'm going to add in more water as well. So I'm not, I'm not afraid. You see what camera does, it creates bubbles. So to know that kangwa is okay, you have to have some amount of bubbles when you put one drop of oil inside the kangwa water. Very important. So as I said, I'm going to add water. And then we're going to continue with the oil process. Make sure that your heat is down. Okay, it's very important. You don't want your achu soup to start boiling. It's going to dissociate the oil from the water that is not what we want so we are adding just drops droplets of oil at a time making sure that it is mixed inside the water before you add another droplet is that water to oil okay my mother keeps a large camera in water then adds the water from the camera to oil okay i understand why i'm doing this is because i realize that this way to get really high quality oil is difficult so sometimes when you put you, you buy oil that is not good and you have um, oil in the pot with kangwa. Oh, the kind of uh, 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 achu soup you are going to have. Oil is going to be laughing at you at one corner while the water is swimming in another corner. So normally when I have oil or I have water in a pot and I'm adding oil, uh, it also allows me to see if the oil is good quality oil or not from the start so that I don't um, mess up a whole pot of soup and then at the end of the day my oil is swimming on one side and the water is swimming on another do you get what i'm saying so now i know that this oil that i have is high quality oil so i'm not panicking i go ahead and put off my heat completely if need be take up take the pot away from the fire you do not want this to boil so you see i'm showing me that my camera is really um enough you know, although I'm not done adding oil yet. So generally, for those of you guys who are watching your weight, what I've added inside here is the approximate of about one tablespoon of oil. It's pretty yellow already, but the problem is that the soup is not thick. Do you understand? This is where, this is where, uh, where is that? This is where aubergine comes in. So if you are watching your weight, you want to eat a chew soup with less oil, make sure that you have aubergine handy. So what you are going to do with the aubergine at this stage, if you were to stop adding oil right now, 
with the kind of soup that is really watery. I mean, if mommy for me the silly kind of soup, he will slap you. So with the soup that is watery, what you do is you blend this steamed aubergine and add it into it. It's going to thicken. It's going to thicken the soup, and that's what I'm going to do at the end. Even though I'm going to add some more oil, but I'm not going to add oil as much as you should in Cameroon, because I don't also want to exaggerate on the oil matter. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in this bottle, I had uh, three quarter cups of oil, but generally for this kind of quantity, people are going to use even one cup on and a half of oil. Do you get what I'm saying? Because remember that when you add the spices, um, the the color changes because the spices are also ground to brown brown. They have the color brown to dark. Okay, so let's go ahead and just be adding that oil little by little. You see, I mean, I already have a very significant look at the oil that I still have inside here. I could leave it like that. Do you understand? But I'm, I'm going to add this three quarter cup, which is reasonably low compared to the quantity that they use back home to prepare this quantity of soup. You know? So I'm going to go ahead and add it. Yes. Mmm. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Everything is combining pretty well. You want to go ahead and just continuously stir that so that everything is mixed up well. But the thing is, if you have, if you have made your achu soup and oil is swimming on one corner, water is swimming on another corner, put it in your blender. You know, let it cool for some time. A little bit, let it be lukewarm. Put it in your blender and blend the whole thing up. Blend the whole thing up is going to help in that mixing process. You don't need to pour a whole pot of soup away. That's not so, I mean, it's not funny. Especially if you don't have a bowl you go away to get oil is problem. To get a salted meat is problem. To get taro is problem. So, see, now we have a reasonably good color and texture for our soup. Generally, people will add more oil, but Auntie Z will not because, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to keep my oil consumption in a safe and a healthy place for me so that when I'm eating, I'm not there eating and I'm, at the same time, um, I'm crying that, oh, oh, yellow. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add my ingredients. This is two tablespoons of ground or two spice. I'm going to start with one. Then I'm going to add in some water into it and then I'm going to use my whisk whisk it whisk it whisk it whisk it whisk it of course the color is going to change yes see the color is going to change so we are going to add it into our soup and we are going to whisk 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 so then I'm going to go ahead and just taste for seasoning Oh yes, very delicious. Oh my goodness, this is so good. You want to add some salt, make sure I always put it in your palm. About a teaspoon of salt, ah, or more, we are five of us. Salt consumption, one teaspoon, six grams a day is good. So add some salt, mix it, mix it, mix it. And then throw in your pepper, mix it. I mean, this is how easy it is to make a chew soup. I have my Maggi here. Generally, you guys know that for my family, it is a rule that I always use about two Maggi cubes when I'm using Maggi. If I'm not, I mean, I must not use, I don't always use Maggi, but when I do, especially for foods like this, I don't use anything more than two Maggi cubes. Never. It's not going to happen because, well, we have to be careful about monosodium glutamate in maggi cube okay so now i have my maggi and salt in there i have my pepper in there mm, delicious now i'm going to go ahead and add my aubergine to thicken the soup 
I'll just I'll not blend it because that's going to take some more time. But I'm going to just go ahead and use this pistol. Oh, sorry. And then we are going to add the aubergine into the sauce, just like so. It's going to thicken the soup. Mmm, man. Next, what we are going to do is add our meat. We had previously boiled all our meats with salt. That's just it. So I'm going to go ahead and add my meat right here. It will. I boiled this yesterday and kept it in the fridge. So. Woo! Chai! I don't know the position I'm going to take to eat this at all. I'm very serious. I really do not know the position. To be quite honest. Now, this thing can go away. Where's my spoon? Ah, there you go. Woo! Yes, one down. Only obstacles. Yes, Bami. Yes, Try. Mama Mia. It's not a play something, no. This is not a play something. So, for those of you who are watching your weight, this is a great way of enjoying your traditional African foods. I mean, actually, it's a food that we eat once in a while at home here. Generally, it's a once in a while, occasional food, you know. So when I cook it, I make sure that I cook it, but I also make sure that I cook it in a healthy way that we can all enjoy guilt-free. So once again, what I'm going to do here is just mix everything up. Whoosh! Masao! It's not a play something. Man, this actual like this noise calling my name. Yes. So when you have done all of this, you want to taste it again. Mmm. Very delicious. Very flavorful. Very, very nice. You will know that your achu is pretty good when you don't really taste um, kanwa. Mmm. So let me go ahead and serve myself some of this deliciousness. Where's my bowl? Uh, there you go. So, remember we had made um, our aubergine round about here. Let's go ahead and add some sauce to this. Wooly! Masao! Man, chai. Add some more sauce here. And this is how the finished product looks like. So I'll take you guys to the table. Let's add some vegetable to this. Woo this is not a play matter. I have my vegetable that I had prepared before. So we want to add some vegetables in there. Just like they do it in Africa. Or like my mom. Oh. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Chai. Man. It's not a play something, no. Not a play something at all, at all, at all, at all. Yes. Now we are talking. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. I don't know. This is it. This is it. Guys, how do you like my plate? How do you like my achu plate, guys? <laughs> Woo! Actually, I'm loving this. I'm going to enjoy it. Do you understand? No guilt at all. I will sit down on the floor. Do you understand? Wear my kaba. Yes, if I can't find 
any achu spice how do i make my own i'll have to show you guys how to combine the spices in another video so while my husband is going to be doing his achu coco i'm going to be doing my aubergine and it's going to be delicious guys thank you so much for sticking with me and watching this video I'll be so grateful if you subscribe. Also, tell your friends about my channel. Share this video on your social media platforms. And I'm going to see you guys in the 